Hey everybody, welcome back to this week's show. One thing nice is for us, we're gonna be fishing close to home. We're gonna be on the Winnebago system and we're gonna be fishing with our good friend, Lightning Lance, along with Terry and Rick from the Bite Me Box. You know what, we're gonna show you guys a little bit about ice safety and we're gonna show you how to stay on these fish when you're working fish that are not structure related. Basically roamers, and I'll tell you something, the fish are biting and it looks like it's gonna be a great season. So you guys hang on to your heinies. We got a great show for you. Time to run a gun and try to find them. All right, and Lightning Lance is way over there. All right. Oh yeah, there he goes. Ooh, that's a big one. That's a good day. Yes. Good way to start the day off. Yeah. You know, that's something too that's finally starting to come back out on the system is that our white bass population for the last five, six years has been really down. You know, just bad spawns. And uh, now you're catching a lot of white bass, bigger ones, but a lot of them that, you know, four, five, ten inch range, you know, so you got a couple different year classes there. I'm not taking one until you guys catch one. Well, Rick, give I'll it another go. Come on. Wait a minute. Got him. Hooked up. What are you going to see? Walleye or white bass? I think this might no be a bass. Oh, no, that's a walleye. Way. Yeah, I knew it. There you go. First one of the morning. How about this? Yeah. Tasty. Yeah, Good little delicious size. eater there. All right. Game on. Put them, put them all down. Throw them in. Put them down. Game on. I just shake my head. Tell you. Hey, I'll tell you what. Now we finally caught a walleye. We're gonna dump a bunch of more uh, bite me boxes down here. Lance has been making some circles around and caught a bunch of white bass and uh, marked a few walleyes, but he's gonna come back in here. With the overcast like this, this bite actually should go pretty much all day here. Uh, the sun comes out, then a lot of times you get that early bite, and then all of a sudden it'll slow back down. And then for some reason, you know, in the last week, week and a half that we've been out here, then about 11, 12 o'clock, it fires back up, but it's a shorter window. And then again, late afternoons are good. So let's throw a few more tip-ups in here. Need another hole? All right. Leg here. Got a little bit of ugly weather today. It's kind of missed to know. Looks like he took out some line. Is there a line marker? Nice, nice eating walleye there. Not a better fish for the pan than that right there. I say they were walleyes. I, don't, I didn't hear you. I was wrong. Oh, whitey. That's not a good sign. Kid flying right in, too. And my first fish of the morning. Game on, game on. You got the tip ups, I got the drill. There you go. Oh, just pulled yeah. it out of them. Hey, buddy, I didn't know it was your birthday today, man. Yeah, that it hey, is, buddy. Happy birthday. And I'm going to stop lady. you from catching some fish for a second. I didn't know that till Hunter told me that. Oh, yeah. Huh? What else would we be doing on our birthday, lady? Yeah. Well, yeah. we kind of do that every day, don't we? We do, for the most part. And uh, you had an incredible day yesterday out here, but you were a mile and a half, maybe two miles west of here, and uh, caught plenty of fish. And this morning, we set up on that stuff 
and uh, Terry and, and Rick set the bite me boxes in there yeah. and they got a few, but we went on the hunt and you know, that's uh, we've been on the hunt for probably two and a half hours with barking very few. Um, I caught one small walleye earlier and you caught a couple of white bass, white bass yeah. but that's something that uh, you and I have been doing forever is that when the fish aren't biting, we get on the hunt because we have the philosophy in it. It's not always right, but I would say it's right probably 80 to 90 percent of the time they are always biting somewhere somehow so basically being aggressive out here and that's something that's why I call him the lightning because he's like this like this you know gotta he's, keep moving they're yeah, always biting somewhere they are he get, get him on the snowmobile but you know the part about being a fisherman is being aggressive because uh, and having that mentality that the fish are always biting and that's why most of the time we're a lot more productive than a lot of other people because you know what, we're on the move all the time. But a lot of the fish, because we've had so much high water, have spent a lot of time in the upper part of the system where this year it is not that way. Don't get me wrong, there's always a resident population of walleyes and white bass and everything else on these upper lakes. But Winnebago, you know, when you don't have that current in the fall, the fish really migrate and stay back that way. If you have a lot of current in the fall, then the fish migrate up to the north here. So we are really expecting probably one of the best years we've had in a long time for perch and walleye. Yeah, hopefully that, hopefully that perch, you know, the, the fall bite was tremendous on the perch bite. So hope we can keep hopefully going. we get safe ice out there, which we will have here shortly. Ooh, there we go. I knew it went oh, to oh, 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 who tied that knot? Oh, look, hey, 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 who tied hey, that knot? Hey, God damn, look, at, look at that, everybody. I just borrowed that pole from look, Smith. Look. School of about three or four of them down there. And a nice eater. Perfect for the frying pan. You know, we've been chipping away at these fish out here, and where we set up, I moved another 100 yards or so right now, but that's typically what we're doing, just constantly keep moving 150, 200 yards, jumping around till you get on a fresh pot of fish, pop two or three of them out of there. She dries up, keep moving, try to get a couple more for the, for the frying pan. Oh yeah, he's dialing. Really dialing. We'll hit this one on the run. Oh yeah, there you go, boy. Oh yeah, this feels like a good fish. Yeah. Not here. Oh, big whitey. <laughs> That's a chunky one. Not what we're here for, but they're all fun. So basically what I'm doing, my cadence is kind of move, 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 and I try to stay above them fish all the time. Like here they come, now Now watch this. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hold it here. Oh, these are all over it. Just hold it still on them. Nope, didn't hit it. Again, staying above them, pop, pop, pop. And if you will see the screen right here, it's just lit right up. Then I'll hold it again. Here he goes, he's gonna move down. Here we go, hey, I'll tell you what, Feels like a good fish. Ooh, there we go. It's a nice walleye, you know, and that's that's about perfect fish right there. Caught him on the old shiver minnow there. And uh, I'm definitely not using any bait at all. Basically what I'm doing is um, keeping it off the bottom about two feet. I'm pretty aggressive on, on this one too. He had her pretty good, I slammed her. There we go, nice fish. Uh, most of the time the key is always to have the nose of it pointed down like it is right now. So basically I'm always pulling the knot back to the farthest towards the tail of the bait. You know, we spent two and a half hours basically without even catching a fish. Uh, just spot after spot. We basically stop for about 10, 15 minutes at the most. Work it. If we don't see anything, mark anything, we're on the move again. So that's the key again. It doesn't matter if it's up on Poygan, Butamore, or if it's on Winnebago. The key for us as guides is always to keep moving. Go. There you go. Ooh. That's a good sign. Love it when that reel's turning. Oh yeah, something in there. Seems like another good eater. Yeah, that's a little better. Than... There we go. 
potatoes are just perfect eating fish. Hey, I'll tell you what, most of the morning, uh, it's been pretty nice out. There wasn't a lot of wind, but now we've got some wind. I'm setting up, this is the new 2800 Eskimo, and uh, it is a great, great shelter for sure. So I'm gonna drill some holes in here and uh, start fishing out of here for a while. Here we go. That one it finally got the bite. Kind of nice sitting in the, oh, the shelter here too. I'll tell you what. Perfect. Oops. Whoa! Ho, 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 almost right back down the hole. That guy went. You know, it's nice to get out of the elements every once in a while. Even though we've had a pretty mild winter, we've got, but we do have a lot of cold weather finally coming, and uh, it does make a big difference. And you know, let's talk a little bit about shelters. You know, the last, you know four or five years we really haven't used a lot of pop-ups or portable shelters um, but we this year you know as everybody knows we went to Eskimo and Ion and boy I'll tell you what a great move it was uh, it's amazing to see just the quality uh, when I put this 2800 together the other day in my shop um, but when you look at too what I love about this is not the door in the front anymore you got two doors they're both on the side so you know this is a two-man uh, the 2800 is a two-man so it's great that everybody has their own door you can slide in or out of it here um, it's just the height in it the, the leg room in the front I uh, just can't uh, when you're looking at the fabric too how durable the fabric is and it doesn't sweat that's the other part I like about it so uh, just a lot ooh, ton of fish down there a lot of really cool things about the Eskimo shelters you guys definitely check out Eskimo this little turn. Oh, yeah, that feels like a pretty good fish I've got some girth. Nice fish. That feels a little better. Feels really good now. Let's see what we got coming. Oh, nice walleye. Nice walleye. Nice walleye. Really nice walleye. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. To me, that's a perfect eating fish right there. That's probably about that uh, 16 and a half to 17 inches right there. That's definitely going to be the key. Close to 20, maybe. That one's got some girth. There we go. Nice fish. Gotta love that early ice, man. That's a beautiful fish. Chunky. You got a good one? Yep. Oh, that is a good one. Oh, hold that one up. That Here, one will that one's a little too big. Look at the size of that fish, Lance. Hold that girl up there. That fish is over 20 inches for sure. Big yep, female. That one will let you know. Yep. We like to let the females go ourselves. Hey, this week's tip of the week brought to you by our good friends up at Mike's Country Meats, the finest jerky on the planet. Hey, I'll tell you what, Terry, you have always got a tip or two. I mean, over the last year and a half that we've been fishing with you and Rick, I'll tell you, you guys always have great tips. Let's give somebody a really good tip on how to catch more fish. Well, one of the things you see a lot of people do is they put out their tip-ups, they set them, and they just leave them. You know, a lot of people are always thinking about changing baits when they're jigging and stuff. In our mind, we're thinking, why aren't they biting these tip-ups, especially if we're marking them? So we're taking that split shot, you know, especially if guys are maybe getting them jigging, we'll slide it way up so that that minnow has a lot of freedom to dart away, cause like an aggression bite right. kind of when you're ripping it away from them. Or the opposite end of the spectrum. We don't, we'll pinch that tail off, maybe slide the split shot down, that way that minnow's just quivering, and on those cold front days, that can make a big difference. That is an absolutely great tip. So everybody, you know what? Again, you know, don't get stuck with one thing. Remember, little things make a huge difference when it comes to fishing. And I'll tell you something, what makes a huge difference is having good jerky when you're out in the outdoors. Make sure you guys check out Mike's Country Meats, the finest jerky on the planet.
Looks like he's got some line out. See what we got going here. Oh yeah, something there. Hoping for that walleye. Got some white bass. Oh yeah, I think I seen a white tail down there. It's not a giant, but that'll be a good one for the frying pan. Find me flying up everywhere. Yeah. Another 15 minutes. Maybe I should leave the shelter here when it gets dark. Be ready with two hands for you. Okay, ready? Burb it. Got him? Yep. Thinking white bass again. Oh, oh thinking walleye. Nice there walleye. you go. Nice walleye. The size Another of that good one. one, I'll tell you that. I'm going to bring it up. The Bite Me box will outfish a beaver dam in any walleye scenario, any crappie, any perch scenario. The only thing that it might not outfish would be northern pike. Hey, what do you guys think? I want to hear your comments on that. Hey, I'll tell you what, Lance, what a great morning we had out here today again on the upper lakes here. You know, we did the same show last year and yep. had very productive. You know, Larry, we've only, we finally got on these fish, you know, four hours of hunting, got on these fish. We got a pretty good pile here. We do. We did get our share of jigging. And you know, I'm not the hugest tip up tip up fan out there. Right. I've fished with these boxes here for the last two, three years. And these aren't computer boxes. What I mean by that, a guy sitting behind a computer. Right. Oh, this is going to work out in the elements. These, these bite me boxes, they do the job out here in the elements. We've been out here in 20 below. The flags are still going off. And the, the tip ups out here caught half the fish today. They did. And they save our butts, which is a great way because, you know, like it or not, Lance, uh, there's just some days where you get might have young kids or you yes. get people that don't have a lot of experience jigging and it is a little bit tougher on them to catch fish. That's where the, the bite me boxes come in handy. Um, you know what, this year we're definitely going to do a show out on Winnebago, but I want you to talk about the guiding. I mean, you're basically running the guiding stuff now and doing all the bookings. So let's tell everybody, you know, what they can expect and what they need to do to get a hold of you to come out and do some fishing because I'm really thinking that we're finally after, you know, four rough years of ice guiding out on the main lake that we're in for a spectacular should, year. Should, yeah. Should be that the fall of this year, they had a great perch bite mixed with some walleyes out there. So we're certainly hoping that them perch are going to go all nice nine to 11 inches, perfect eaters. Or no doubt. Um, we get some good ice conditions out there, but within a, a week or so, we should have good, some good ice out there. But basically, uh, we'll put the number up at the end of the show here. Give me a show. We'll get you scheduled up, uh, get you out there fishing. Really, all you have to bring is whatever you want to eat and drink. And they're pretty much set and, you, you know, yep. something to take their fish home in. Hey, everybody, you know what? I Like I always say every week, you know, um, what a, an awesome place we have here. This country is just amazing. We want to thank all of our military men and women for the great service that they give us. I definitely want to thank this week all of our World War II vets. Uh, they were some brave, brave people, I'll tell you that. And they really shaped this country to what it is now. And definitely want to give special thanks to them. Want to always give special thanks to all of our military people and all of our law enforcement agents and all of our firefighters and paramedics. Hey everybody, remember we are still living in the greatest country in the world and let's keep it that way. Yes, sir. And no doubt, Lance, it is a great day to be alive and we'll see you guys next week. A little slow on the, on the camera too. Oh, I'm ready. Oh, he's ready. Oh, he says he's ready. He's ready. Believe that? I'm glad he's ready. <laughs> you know what I call Taco Bell? Poopy Bell. Ready means I'm ready. Oh, you! Oh, I'm sorry. He's he's really he's ready. Really ready this time. They are. They're. they're I don't know. They're. They're almost impossible to, to hang on to. Yeah. Oh. Dude, that was all you. That was all I knew you. I shouldn't have grabbed it. Dang it! I can't believe we lost the. I can't believe I lost the pot. <laughs>